Hey guys, welcome to uh, a fun lesson. This is the origin story of creation, at least according to me. So I think that at this stage in your course progression, it's helpful to have some basic context, some understanding of how these different teachings that you're studying at this time fit into the bigger picture. What is the greater philosophical cosmo cosmological context for this? Now this origin story of creation that I'm about to share with you is based on direct experience, it's based on meditations, it's based on readings, it's based on other people's or beings' materials that I really resonate with and have extracted things from. Um, it is based on intuitions, it's based on insights and visions and downloads, so to speak. So here is my most complete, basic but most complete image or overview of the origin story of creation. Simply take from it what resonates and leave what does not. And you will start to see how the different teachings fit into place within this overarching context. So, before the beginning of time, for lack of a better word, because there is no time, but before time was created, before creation was created, there was the absolute, the one, infinity, the infinite one, whatever you want to call it, but this is the absolute. Okay, this is in the infinity teaching. This is what I go into. This is what we point to. This is what you will realize for yourself experientially. The one is absolutely beyond everything, beyond time, beyond consciousness, therefore beyond all experiences. It's a bit of an enigma. It's a bit of a mystery. In fact, it's a complete mystery. It's a total mystery. It's an infinite mystery. Now the one before it created creation was simply the one, an infinite oneness. Now if you imagine an infinite oneness and the closest we can get with our minds is perhaps for most people to imagine an infinite space but without all the stars, without all the galaxies, without the sense of distance, without the sense of time, without the presence of heat or cold, without the presence of even awareness of self or I am awareness. Why? Because if you imagined its vastness with no reference points whatsoever, just infinity itself, oneness itself, unity itself. If there truly is only one, and it's one infinite being with zero reference points in its original state of unity, of absolute oneness, of absolute infinity, this one quote-unquote being, or this one infinity, cannot know itself. It does not it have awareness of itself. Awareness is secondary. Awareness comes after. Awareness is a creation. So the one in its very original state before the creation of time was slash is because everything exists simultaneously is unaware of itself. Infinity yet holds the potential for every possible creation that could ever be thought into existence. Now, the first, very first expression of infinity, the very first creation of infinity was that of free will, was that of awareness itself. Awareness and free will are synonymous. You see, because awareness is free will. It is the absolute's free will. It's the infinite one's free will. It is, awareness is the one in actionable form, in dynamic form, so to speak. It is the one in such a format, awareness is the one in such a format that it can, in a sense, move and focus in and out of certain things. It can move around. It can have, in that, in that sense, free will. And at the basis of awareness lies infinite intelligence because it's the most direct derivative, it's derived of, from, infinity itself, absolute infinity. So infinity wanted to, in a sense, express itself, because that's one of its possibilities, and everything that can exist does exist. 
So one of the possibilities of infinity, of absolute oneness and unity, or foreverness, one of its options, one of its quote-unquote therefore desires is to express itself, to experience itself, to create itself, to taste of itself, to know itself. Hence, awareness came forth out of this possibility and out of the desire for this possibility. So out of infinite vastness and union, with no reverence points, no awareness of self, suddenly awareness started to arise, started to arise. free will, motion or movement in a sense, movement of consciousness of awareness started to arise, free will started to appear. The active free agent of infinity was quote unquote created. Now, so we're at the second stage of creation. The first one is before creation, which is absolute oneness, absolute infinity. Now, the first step down from that, so to speak, not so much down in a negative sense, but down on the scale of absolutism, so to speak. What is the most absolute is the absolute infinity beyond experiencing. Then arose free will or pure awareness. The ability, the potential for every potential experience to be experienced. Free awareness, the free agent, the ultimate free agent. Now this ultimate free agent, which as, at its basis has infinite intelligence at its disposal in a movable form, in a workable form, now, this was still completely blank. The, the creation did not exist as we know it in that sense. Again, speaking in terms of linear time, just because it's easier. But it's not so much before, it's simultaneous. So on the level of pure awareness, in that sense, you could say creation still does not exist. But let's just talk about it linearly. Like this came first and then came that. First there was the one before anything else came into existence. Then there was free will, the absolute free agent, free awareness. Um, infinity in potential actionable form, ready to start experiencing itself. Then came about the first expression that awareness using infinite intelligence and free, the free agent has only one job. The job is, the job description is to express and experience infinity to the best of its ability to the fullest of its ability, to approach infinity, true infinity, in experiential realms, so in experiential terms. So to try to express infinity, which is beyond the concept of experiences, inside of or by means of experiences is one hell of a task. Because experiences will always have a finite nature, and infinity is by definition absolutely infinite. So in order for awareness to do its job properly, it can only do one thing, and that is, if it has to use experiences, which it does because that's what awareness is for, is to experience the one's potential, the one's possibility in form, is to manifest, to create, to experience the one from as many potential avenues as possible, in as many ways, create creation in as many possible ways as it can. That is how it can approach infinity with the finite means of experience and consciousness. Hence, there is infinite parallel realities available to awareness. There is anything that can exist does exist precisely because it has to approach infinity by means of the limited nature of experiences. Any experience has the limitation that it is an experience. Infinity does not have that limitation. But for experience to reflect infinity, there needs to be all kinds of experiences. In fact, there has to be infinite different types and ways and angles and points of view of every potential experience. So creation is filled with infinite possibility. Awareness using infinite intelligence has the potential for infinite creations in order to approach infinity so that it can do its job to reflect infinity in experience in the experiential realm. Now, as a basis, like in order to create as many creations as you potentially can, you need a very, 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 very simple unified basis for all of that to arise out of. If the very structure, the very underlying structure of reality itself is com complicated, you cannot actually create, you cannot actually sustain infinite realities because it would be too conflicting. It would have to go by too many rules. So the very 
fundamental uh, presence of creation itself needs to be simple, it needs to be unified, it needs to be singular. So what does infinite intelligence in its vast, open, still undifferentiated state create? Its first creation is unconditional love. Its first expression, its first basis is that of unconditional love. Unconditional love is natural. It's natural to infinite awareness. It's natural to the infinite. Why? Because there is only unity. And since there is only one, love is the natural state of awareness. Because awareness is the exact and immediate derivative or um, expression, the immediate expression of infinity is free agency, free will. And so in order for this intelligence to create all that it can create, it needs a foundational basis to generate experiences from. Like a potter, um, someone that works with pottery needs to have the substance of clay in order to make all the different pots that it can, that he can, that she can. So similarly, the free agent, the ultimate free agent, the active principle of infinity, the active form of unity of the one needs a very simple, profound, singular basis to create everything out of. Now this basis is unconditional love itself. Unconditional love itself could also be termed presence energy, although presence energy also includes the idea of light, but at its most fundamental form, presence energy is the field of unconditional love. So again, just to briefly recap to where we are right now, infinite vastness, infinite unity does not know itself. There's no reference point. Then in order to generate experience of itself, it generates first free agency, free will, awareness. Awareness then generates a basis for every other potential experience to be made out of. This basis is unconditional love. So we have the one, then we have free agency or free will or awareness. And then we have the field of unconditional love. Now this field of unconditional love is still just like the previous two states in a sense, is still undifferentiated. It is still in its original form, just a singular field of unconditional love with not necessarily any reference points aside from its own presence. So now awareness has created presence energy, has created the fundamental essence of all possible creation experiences. So imagine this unconditional love as a field, as an undifferentiated field of complete potential. It holds the vibration for all potential. It holds the energy for all potential configurations of energy to come out of. Now, unconditional love is invisible. Unconditional love is undifferentiated. It's so subtle because it's just one singular field and it holds up everything else. So it's not yet defined. It's not yet visible. It's not yet that experiential in a sense. It's not yet able to really perceive or create or generate itself, generate experience out of itself. Not yet. So there needs to be another factor. This factor is light in a sense. By light, I don't necessarily mean physical light, although that is one expression of light. By light, I mean illumination. I mean enab enabling there to be experience of the field of unconditional love. So now the free agent, awareness, the first expression of unity, of infinity, started to work its infinite intelligence, its magic, its intelligence upon this unconditional field of love and it generated therefore light it generated light so that it could in a sense see what it was experiencing so that it could make the unconditional potential field of love experiential active activated so now we have presence energy as a complete as a complete um makeup includes love light so love light basically is presence energy the fullness of presence energy and now we have a complete package for creation to become experiential. We have intelligence or awareness acting on behalf of infinity to express itself in as many ways as it can to approach the infinite one. We have that intelligence, that awareness. Now we have the potential for experiences, which is unconditional love, the basis for everything else. But now we have light, which makes it all visible, which makes it all experiential, which makes it all tangible, which starts to work its magic on the field of unconditional love. So this intelligence, 
now works its magic on the field of unconditional love. It generates light. It generates the spark of, in a sense, consciousness, of visibility. And now this visibility, this non-physical light at this stage, which also becomes physical light at some point, turns into everything that we know. So love light is the foundation of everything that we know. Everything that we see literally is a manifestation of love light. So the fifth layer in the origin story of creation that I'm sharing with you today is form or specificity or patterns or particular vibratory creations or appearances, right? So we got the one. So there's five layers to this story. There's the absolute one. Then there is its free agent actionable principle, awareness. Then there is unconditional love as the potential field, the potential for everything that could ever potentially be created out of this field of unconditional love. Then there is light, which enables experience, which enables that potential field of unconditional love to be shaped in different forms. And therefore we arrive at the fifth state of creation, which is specificity or form or appearances. So awareness can use its intelligence to work, again, its magic, its intelligence onto this uh, to sort of rub itself off of intelligently. So to generate patterns inside or ripples inside of this infinite field or endless field of love light. And by generating these different ripples, these different patterns, it starts to learn about itself. It starts to learn how it can generate different types of experiences. And so out of that, combination of the love light field that is the foundation of creation and the magic or the infinite intelligence that is awareness acting on behalf of the infinite one the combination of those like r rubbing two fire stones together to create sparks this intelligence working its magic on this field of infinite love light now generates patterns of vibration patterns of love light that start to become more and more crystallized more and more defined these patterns start to repeat themselves, start to weave into each other. In a sense, they start to form a web and different nodal points within that web, like a spider web, start to cross. It starts to cross its own path over and over and over again. So that on those nodal points of the infinite field of love light, using the infinite intelligence that awareness has at its disposal, is now generating this web of energy, this web of love light. And so there's multiple points in this field where the patterns, where the waves of creation, where the vibrations of creation start to interact with each other, start to collapse onto itself in a sense, start to um, weave over and over and over again on similar points. So this pattern, just like a spider web, creates nodal points or intersection points. Each of these intersection points becomes an experiential realm, becomes an experience that stands out, that is defined. So this is just one way of seeing it, and it's a bit of a rough way to see it. But there is no real good analogy for this, um, for this creation process of how love light turns into everything we see. But the illusion or the uh, concept of the spider web will do. So imagine that that spider generates the same pathways over and over and over again. At some point, those nodal points become so thick that they can start to appear physical. Even though in its original state, the spider web in the analogy of love light energy is actually non-physical but as non-physical energy starts generating patterns and waves and it starts crossing its own path over and over and over and over again it builds up that density of energy until it starts to even appear physical so that's how we get all the way down to our physical creation our physical reality it is love light crossing its own path in certain patterns in certain vibratory ripples in a sense over and over and over again until it seems to be a static physical linear reality but in between the absolute state of love light the unconditional field of love light the present energy state of creation itself and physical reality there's many infinite endless dimensions of different subtleties of this love light being utilized to generate experiences one example of non-physical experience is in your dreams at night or when you're thinking or imagining something. When you're imagining something, you're literally tuning in to different possibilities of this field of love light and you're tuning into 
parts of the spider web, parts of the infinite field, part of the infinite web of love light energy that are not yet crossed, has not yet crossed its own path so many times that it has become as dense as physical reality. You're tuning into different types of subtleties of energy, subtleties of the state of the love light energy that is. So this is the origin story of creation. First there is the one, then there is awareness or free agency, then or infinite intelligence. Then there is the unconditional potential that is unconditional love, which is always present no matter what the creation creates, no matter what appears. Then out of that appeared light was made light so that experience could become visible, could become exact, could become precise, could become specific. And then indeed it did become specific. It did start to take on form. So we get these five stages of creation in that sense. And you can tap into any one of these stages and that's what the Academy, Three Infinity Academy is for, is to become, make you familiar, experiential with all of these layers, with all of these levels. If you want to, you can also just stick to this teaching, the empowerment teaching. But I also encourage you at some point to explore the enlightenment and the infinity teachings, if it resonates, just so that you have this full spectrum of experience, this full spectrum of free will, this full spectrum of remembrance and the tools that you need to tap into any one of these levels and start to know yourself at all of these levels, ultimately, simultaneously, equally so. And so you can start to enjoy creation and remember what it's made out of and what it's made for. The very purpose of creation is to express infinity and that's why you are here. You are, you are, an, um, in a sense, you are a nodal point of the infinite free awareness that is the free agent of existence. Your particular sense of I am is your individuation, your individuated free will aspect of the complete ultimate free agent that is pure awareness, which you can also tap into more and more, still from your own nodal point of I am, because you can't really escape that, because all that is has created you to be an individuated point of existence. But ultimately so, you are all that is, and you are the all that is awareness as well. And you are infinity as well. So this is such an exciting journey and such an exciting concept that you can tap into the very, very highest, most absolute states and stages of existence itself. And you can also enjoy fully your crystallized human experience, knowing where it comes from, knowing that it has purpose, knowing that it has value, knowing that it has importance, knowing that this moment is here, this moment between you and I right here is auspicious. It's meant to be here. It's perfect. It's excellent. It's desired all the way down from infinity, all the way down from the ultimate free agent. This is one of the ways in which infinity can get to know and interact with itself. It's absolutely brilliant. And so nothing should be dismissed as not being relevant, as not being part of creation. You have your preferences and that is definitely part of the empowerment practice is to get to know who you are on a resonance level. But excuse me, but you are meant to experience all these expressions of infinity, including the ringtone. You are meant to express yourself as all these different forms and experience purpose in your life. So this teaching, the empowerment teaching is all about just sort of referencing the background, meaning referencing the absolute states, but without necessarily getting lost in the absolute state and just becoming a meditative monk. This teaching empowerment is all about just knowing what's behind you, knowing where you come from, so that you can understand and appreciate what is right in front of you. So that you can empower yourself with what's right in front of you, so that you can understand from a proper perspective what's right in front of you, but then actually start acting and creating as free agent as the free agent is meant to create from a state of total clarity as to who it is and what it's here to do. And what you are here to do, my friend, is to express infinity in your own absolute way, in your own infinite way, in your own brilliantly unique way. The one wants to experience itself through infinite ways and you, my friend, are one of these ways. That's how crucial this is. Without you, the all that is in this expression of infinity would not be as infinite as it could be. It would not be complete. It needs to express itself in 
the way that your life unfolds itself and that you create your life. And you have absolute free will on all levels of your consciousness. And so, become the creator that you are. Remember who you are. Remember where you came from and remember that your life has purpose. Feel empowered in that way. I thank you and hope you enjoy your day knowing that you are the infinite one in form, in expression and form. Thank <laughs> you.